SMT Nation, we back. Nation, in today's video, I want to share with you some images of some speed tests taken on the AT&T network, and I want to explain a very simple concept with you all, why this really matters. AT&T QCI, their levels of, I don't know, kind of uh, priority access on their network and their network management, they really matter. All right, this is not the AT&T of 2019 through 2022. They are being very strict on the data management on their network follow me over on the x platform and also shout out to my brother cipriani tech over on the platform for sharing these images and uh kind of the inspiration for this video all those links uh for the community components and interactive components of the channel will be down in the description ways to support us can be found there as well please do like and share this video if you like content like this subscribe for more and turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks, QCI really matters. All right, priority access on AT&T really does matter. To show you guys how much it matters, here is a speed test on N77. This is the C-band DoD combo 5G plus for AT&T, and it's through FirstNet. Uh, for those of you that know about FirstNet, know how it works, it's a preemptive priority data network access on the AT&T network gives them unique access to the first net core uh, gives them full access to the AT&T commercial network but offers you know priority and those types of things so 404 megabits down seven and a half megabits up you've got a latency of 39 a jitter of seven loaded pings between six and 700 okay so that that's your first net no connection on the AT&T network at this particular location will perform better than that. This is the best anyone can do, QCI 6. Now, if I switch over to AT&T Internet Air, you guys notice something. We go from, what was that? 400 megabits per second down, down to 104 megabits per second down. That difference in throughput is just simple QCI, right? Uh, QCI 9 is for AT&T Internet Air. Ping time at 98, jitter at 47. You see a very different performance metric. Those two metrics there, those two things show kind of the network management happening. Now you'll, you'll say, oh wow, you know, 52 megabits for uplink. Well, what's going on there? That's just the quality of signal. The, the egg or whatever the the gateway for, for internet error is obviously going to be able to pull a stronger signal, has more gain. So that's probably helping the uplink. But if you just look at the downlink throughput, there's a, a huge difference. It's a 4x multiplier, right? So this goes to show you, this is not the AT&T network of three, four years ago. AT&T has grown substantially pretty much every single quarter for the last handful of years. They historically have added between three and 400,000 lines per quarter sometimes even more five six hundred thousand lines and those lines are, have usage and there are no free lines at at&t so these are users that are paying these are users that are uh you know using the network to its full capabilities don't forget you know you've got prepaid customers you've got postpaid customers you have over six million first net customers you have internet air customers now you know business and consumer there is a lot of usage at at&t and they technically have the least amount of bandwidth on their dedicated 5G channels. They also have the least amount of upgraded tower sites with those new C-band and DoD, you know, frequencies. So this is important to know. And I know a lot of you have a disdain for the, you know, the AT&T turbo feature, which kind of boosts your QCI access, right? Now you got to pay for it $7, but it makes a difference. And I'm not saying this is make or break. If you're in a market where AT&T is very modern and they've got 5G plus pretty ubiquitous, very available and the reach is everywhere, then it's not really an issue. But in places where it's sparing, sparingly offered or available, you don't have that much of a modernized tower cell grid, you know, it might be worth your considerations. And I think it's just something you got to be aware of. Anyways, for anybody out there that uses FirstNet, uses AT&T Internet Air, has the consumer wireless or the business wireless share your experiences with me tell me how things have been going the last couple of years has the internet you know 
speeds or data speeds have they changed have they gotten worse or better seeing the upgrades has it made a difference share with me your experiences on the at&t network you're the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard